Hi, I'm Paul Gainham, the Senior Director of Service Provider Marketing here at Juniper Networks in the Europe, Middle East and Africa region. Uh, my presentation will look at uh, some of the security issues, challenges and indeed some of the solutions uh, that are confronting mobile network operators, particularly those that are looking at or are involved in the deployment and transition to an all IP LTE network environment. Um, it is becoming increasingly clear that there is a developing threat vector there that threatens the stability and indeed uh, the delivery of services um, from some of those deployments. Um, as you go through and uh, listen to the presentation, please do feel free afterwards to mail me at pgainham at juniper.net or on Twitter at, at Paul Gainham. I'd be delighted to take and answer any questions you have related to the presentation. So in looking at the key challenges facing mobile operators uh, in this environment, um, it could be argued that they have been victims of their own success. Um, as you know, more and more capacity has been deployed, whether it's in 3G or more latterly LTE and 4G environments, um, the types of applications and services that are you know, being developed to use that capacity often become more and more critical to the users themselves. Um, good examples of that, if you take a look at Africa as an example, um, certainly in a number of countries in that continent, mobile broadband is the primary uh, broadband delivery mechanism, both for consumers and businesses. And of course, as that becomes you know, the, the default for many, um, the criticality of maintaining both uptime and security clearly cannot be uh, underestimated. Uh, in the more developed markets, then again, we're beginning to see new applications that draw on uh, you know, the increased bandwidth and scale that uh, certainly 4G uh, begins to offer. A good example of that is e-health and you know, certainly mobile health uh, and other applications similar. The, you know, the key to this is that as the bandwidth provides greater capacity, um, the, the greater and greater reliance the application and the users will have on that. And that really drives mobile network operators to look at both you know, securing the data that obviously carries across their network, but also maintaining uptime. And I think this is the critical area that we'll come on to later in the presentation, is you know, maintaining uptime against potential denial of service attacks and others becomes a crucial consideration for operators as they make that transition to LTE. So if you look at the end-to-end the -end security insertion points that mobile network operators need to be considering, um, typically if we start at the left on the device, you know, really the focus there will be on uh, capabilities or products or solutions around mobile device management. Typically a way of securing the device and providing protection from viruses, etc., on the handset or the device itself. Now, typically that may not be in the control of the operator, but it's maybe something that's offered as a service to an end user to gain provide the necessary level of device protection, given the criticality of some of the services and applications that the users will run. Over on the right hand side, if you look at the applications themselves, and indeed the data center, this is where the you know, traditional security techniques around uh, you know, intrusion detection and prevention layer four through seven firewalling, et cetera, have typically been in place for some time and continue to need to be uh, in place. But that's often a well-considered, you know, well-defended area of the network. Um, but it does still continue to change. And of course, operators need to keep in touch with the latest threat vectors from a security perspective. Um, right at the center of the diagram here is the network itself. And I think if you look at you know, certain parts of the network, what we're beginning to see is that this is the area that maybe operators have not really considered the full threat vector landscape here. Um, and certainly in a number of conversations and listening to operators at various trade shows, etc., this is an area that we think has been left open in terms of a maybe a backdoor threat to the network. And therefore, you know, a lot of focus is required from the industry if the networks are to maintain both their, you know, their valued status in terms of uptime but also you know, overall uh, application and delivery security. One of the, uh, the other key things to consider when looking at security is scale. Um, certainly from a mobile network standpoint, it's not just the number of devices that becomes important. You know, certainly a network could be looked to secure maybe you know, for hundreds of thousands, low millions, possibly tens of millions uh, of endpoints or devices. 
The critical consideration is also one of session scale. Um, if you look at some of the latest uh, mobile apps being deployed on smartphones, um, not all of them were written with the network in consideration, which is, of course, a, a major understatement. Um, many of them you know, will open up you know, often tens, in some cases, hundreds of individual sessions. And from a security perspective, you know, the operators need to consider and secure not only the, the device, but also each individual session. Because looking at it from the outside in, it only takes one of those sessions to be a rogue session for the potential to bring down either the network itself or clearly to uh, you know, initiate a data breach uh, or data challenge to the operator um, by not securing each and every one of those sessions. Uh, a good example, Google Maps can typically open anywhere between 100 to 200 individual sessions as it loads the map image on a device. That in itself creates a massive challenge in terms of scaling the infrastructure, again, to secure each and every one of those sessions. So if we now take a look at the main uh, security insertion points within the mobile network, there are really three areas to consider. Um, the first one, starting from the bottom of the chart, uh, is the roaming interface, or the S8 uh, interface. And this is typically the interface between uh, the home mobile network and a roaming partner, and may be acted on on a one-to-one -one basis, uh, directly with a peering partner, um, or on a one-to-many basis via a, a roaming network. Um, typically, the role here is to provide GTP tunneling security, um, and also to act as a gateway to, you know, between the various software levels and revisions of the different networks from both the host and indeed the roaming partners. Um, I think it's fair to say that this is a pretty well understood uh, environment. A number of operators are, you know, have deployed solutions in this space, and this one is pretty clearly understood by most. Um, moving up to the, uh, the second insertion point, uh, which is the GI interface, uh, and this is the interface between the mobile network and uh, the broader internet. So clearly this is a classic kind of firewall environment uh, for layer four to seven security, um, possibly a location for CGNAT type services between IPv4 and IPv6 environments, and is often a place that operators will also add potentially a number of other value-added services uh, onto the platform. Um, again, I think it's fair to say that this is a pretty well understood uh, environment. Um, the third one, and the one that we're focused on mostly on this presentation, um, is the LTE access security uh, requirement. Um, and I think it's fair to say this creates, or is, is certainly the, uh, the area that operators need most focus on. Um, currently, within the 3GPP release specs and release 10, um, there is no mandatory call for this part of the network to be secured. It is now, as operators transition uh, to uh, LTE, an all IP environment. And that brings with it a number of security challenges and risks that, in my belief, you know, a number of operators have yet to really grasp or to really focus on. So let's move on now to take a look at the specifics of this LTE access security challenge. Um, if you look at it, the fundamental behind the challenge is that uh, as operators transition to LTE, they are effectively transitioning to an all IP network environment. And that brings with it a number of threats uh, and challenges, which we'll come back to in a later slide. Um, but it's, e it's interesting to compare and contrast maybe LTE with the, you know, the classic 3G network environment. Um, within 3G, uh, data traffic was encrypted between the user endpoint or device, the mobile handset, and the radio network controller. As we move towards LTE, uh, that encryption is only in place between the device uh, and the eNode B. Any traffic that leaves the eNode B heading into the uh, central packet core or Evolve packet core is effectively open IP traffic. And that's the fundamental security risk involved here. And again, I think it's the area that a number of operators have either yet to fully consider or grasp, but it does leave open a series of potential security threats um, that really do challenge both uptime and security of the mobile network environment. And really, the, the three major threats that are that, you know, kind of apparent in this space um, are that because it is an open, all IP environment, um, three real things that can happen here in our viewpoint. Uh, the one is that the, the actual, the, the physical infrastructure becomes open to uh, you know, kind of rogue attack. 
um, you know, by users maybe visiting a macro cell site, possibly a small cell or a micro cell site. If a, if a hacker manages to get access to the physical network infrastructure, if that's not being secured properly, then potentially the hacker can get in access to the main kind of core elements of the network, where of course they could cause uh, quite a lot of damage. Um, the second point is from you know, the rogue installation of eNodeBs. You know, again, you know, the more sophisticated hackers that have the knowledge and the ability to masquerade as uh, an eNodeB, to place that in the network and again use that as an attack vehicle to bring down you know, some of the key core network components uh, within the Evolve Packet Core and beyond. All of which, of course, will lead to severe network outage. Um, the third one is the classic man-in-the-middle attack. Because traffic you know, is being carried across the often public network connections, um, because the data itself is not encrypted, there is the danger or is there the potential risk uh, for man-in-the-middle attacks. People either snooping, sniffing, and retrieving sensitive data from those connections um, that previously they would not have had, have, have had access to. So looking at some of the, uh, the common requirements in this space, we've outlined you know, some of the key threats and some of the challenges here. Uh, now's the time to maybe look at some of the key requirements that operators you know, should be considering if they believe this offers a present and real threat, um, as I have outlined. Um, if you look at some of the points on the slide here, some of the key challenges are around the provision uh, of IPsec security. Um, but from the eNode B, um, multiple eNode Bs, of course, deployed across the network into a central IPsec security gateway. Um, that is crucial in that it provides both uh, a solution to the man in the middle attacks, because data is now encrypted, but also from the rogue attacks, because endpoints and devices can then be you know, securely authenticated um, as they open IPsec tunnels or they're allowed to enter existing IPsec tunnels between the eNode B and again the security gateway. So certainly a key step is the provision uh, of the IPsec security facility and security association between the eNode B and the central uh, security gateway. Um, further on to that, and we'll come on to this uh, very shortly, is in providing that as a security facility, it has to be highly resilient and highly reliable. Um, clearly, what we're now asking for is all of the mobile traffic, whether that's voice traffic, machine to machine, um, you know, uh, e, you know e-health type applications, etc. Everything has to come through uh, the newly created IPsec tunnel. So it is, of course, imperative that we provide the necessary resilience for that. So that if there are issues within the network, we're not, you know, in a in a position to bring down potentially tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or in some cases millions of end user sessions. And just focusing on the resiliency angle, because this again is a, you know, is a very crucial aspect of this. Often people comment that you know, the more security they add to the network, the less reliable the network becomes. And whilst that's understandable from a, you know, a certain viewpoint, um, if you look at the slide here, what, uh, you know, what we're certainly suggesting from a Juniper perspective is you know, we have the ability to provide not only the, you know, the security aspects of IPsec and the, the various authentication um, and key uh, exchange capabilities that IPsec brings, but also to build in a level of resilience into that solution itself. Um, you know, many security solutions rely on effectively a resilient platform, a resilient box, it's box itself, you know, which may have multiple power supplies, multiple control planes, uh, multiple forwarding planes. That in itself provides a level of resiliency but the box is still a single point of failure. Um, one of the ways around that is to provide what we call an active-active uh, dual pairing uh, of IPsec gateway nodes that provide not only uh, signaling transparency, you know, all of the signaling and all of the data traffic is effectively mirrored between the two boxes. So if one of them should fail in operation, then none of the control traffic is lost. Effectively, all the data gets swung over uh, to the active a backup device, uh, and with a, within a few seconds of that occurring, all of the existing traffic continues to flow. So, you know, for those that look at security and think it adds a, you know, maybe a reliability issue to the network, I think it's fair to say that this offers a, you know, a solution to that in providing not only the security, but also the required resiliency and reliability for the network as well. 
So how does Juniper Networks go about uh, you know, applying itself to solving some of these challenges? The key platforms that we provide to mobile network operators are the SRX security gateway family. Um, and that runs from the SRX 1400 all the way up to the SRX 5800. Um, some key elements of the family are that you know, each of these products has been deployed um, in mobile network operators worldwide, whether that's in a GI, an S8, or indeed an LTE security gateway uh, application. So Juniper has a lot of experience in terms of how to deploy, how to build, and how to you know, provision um, security as a component of each of the major uh, you know, kind of insertion points that we touched on earlier. Um, each of the platforms, uh, you know, as you build up from the, the lower end to the higher end, increases both in scale, resiliency, and reliability. Um, and typically the flagship of the family, the SRX 5800, is the, pro the product I mentioned on the previous slide uh, in terms of its ability to act in an active-active, uh, redundant or resilient pair configuration, um, and has tended to be the platform of choice for medium to larger mobile network operator deployments. So in summary, um, hopefully what you've seen us cover during this short presentation is that the LTE security threat is real and present. Um, certainly, I think a number of mobile operators have yet to really consider this as a serious or a developing threat vector. And all of the stats and all of the research tends to back up the fact that there are still some major gaps as operators move towards LTE in terms of them putting in place the necessary security uh, to obviously to maintain both a secure network environment, but also the criticality of uptime. Um, certainly, uh, you know, with the development of small cells and het nets, um, this risk and this vector is only going to increase. You know, it is crucial, I think, for operators to really get a handle on this early uh, in the deployment life cycle um, and build out an infrastructure that carries both the, you know, the critical traffic that we mentioned, but also provides the necessary levels of uptime security you know, appropriate to the kinds of applications that are now being deployed. I think it's critical, again, when you look at the, the, you know, the, kind of the design criteria or considerations, to look at you know, how you scale this kind of environment. You know, it's not just the number of devices, it's the number of IPsec tunnels, the number of connections per second, you know, a number of factors that should be considered alongside the reliability, the point I made on a previous slide about building in not just security, but reliable security as well. Um, and finally, from a Juniper Networks perspective, um, clearly this is a market that Juniper has provided a number of solutions into over time. Uh, and we have a number of uh, you know, reference uh, case studies and customers that have deployed us in the GI, the S8, and the growing market for LTSEC security. Um, so with that, just a reminder, if there are things to do with the presentation that you'd like to reach out to Juniper Networks, please feel free to reach me at pgainham at juniper.net uh, or via my Twitter account, which is at Paul Gainham. Uh, and with that, thank you.